Hey everyone, how's it going? Okay, so on uh, the video tonight, what I'm going to talk about is the uh, the Death Wish, the Hanged, or the Crossbones, the Hanged uh, mechanical tube mod clone. That's right, the clone. Um, this one has gone full patina, and I'm actually leaving it that way. If you could check it out, how it is and all that stuff. So uh, we're going to go. We're going to have a close up look at this, but I'm going to do the video a little bit different than I normally do it. What I'm going to do is I'm kind of going to show you first impressions of me actually unpacking or unboxing uh, the contents of the box, the way it comes um, all wrapped up and you can see the clear coat on it. What I did um, after I'd unboxed it was what I usually do with my mods is I remove the clear coat with just some wet dry sandpaper and some water and blah, blah, blah. Then I shined it up real, real nice. Uh, so it was sparkling, almost golden. And then I've let it naturally patina. So I think this zombie hand down here in the noose and where it says the hang looks fucking killer and all that stuff. But I'm gonna do a video um soon in the next few weeks where uh if you don't know how to do that whole removing the clear coat um and putting it back to its natural finish i'm going to show you how to do that but anyway so let's have a closer look at this mechanical tube mod clone okay so right so here's the box which is a wood finish but it's actually cardboard and it's not coffin shaped either like the authentic boxes we got a skull on it we got the crossbones on it we got an upside down cross either side i think this says 2016 Top of the box, it says Death Wish. Other side of the box again, I think 2016 on the top of the box, Death Wish, nothing on the back of it. So yeah, this mechanical hybrid tube mod clone is called a Death Wish. Open up the box on the left hand side, all wrapped up in plastic, you have the actual tube mod itself, which is 26 millimeters in diameter. And on the right hand side, you have the unholy RDA. Also in the box, you get a little bag containing the blue screwdriver, a couple of spare screws, a couple of spare O-rings, and a couple of pre-wound coils. 26 millimeters in diameter. Copper tapers down to about 24 at the top. Got the noose here, which is engraved in. And the bottom, uh, the actual lettering is engraved in as well, and it reads uh, The Hanged. And the engraving on this is very nicely done, I have to say. Tapers down to 24 millimeters at the very base and the top. Got an X there, which is for the vent. That's the air circulation and in case of a battery meltdown. Here in the switch, you got the two crosses, the skull, the fake serial number as well. Bit hard to work the button out here. The button should just spin freely, but it's in there. So I'm going to use a 20 pence piece coin. To get it in and get that sucker out. Threads are a bit rough. You can kind of feel it. Not smooth. Bit of an effort to get the uh, uh, the button out here the first time. The threading is not smooth, smooth, smooth. Let's have a look inside. You can see it's not that neat a job. It's pretty kind of messy towards the end. It looks like there's loads of splinters or metal shavings in there. You can see the threads, they look okay. Definitely need a bit of oil work through it. The base is a bit dirty looking as well. Looks like it needs a really good polish, really good clean to get all that stuff out of there. And this is the switch assembly. I will go into this in more detail. But for now, if you can see, it's a copper contact on top and a big beefy spring in there. Hope it's beefy, but we'll look at this more later. So the zombie hand on the unholy RDA is engraved in and you have upside down crosses either side. Here's the deck, um, and it, it is a clamp style. And yeah, that's my first look, first impressions, real unboxing of the Hanged mechanical tube mod and the unholy 24 millimeter um, RDA. So I'm going to actually shine this up, uh, give it a polish, remove this clear coating, uh, fix those threads, and actually uh, come back and see how it performs after a while. So. All right, so check it out. So after the unboxing, I didn't like that clear coat that was on it. I actually don't like clear coating at all. I nearly always take it off and keep it shiny and all this stuff. But um, I did that with this. I used wet and dry sandpaper, right? Uh, drew a little bit of water and I just spent... I'm going to have a video coming up on how I do this to my mod soon. So um, if you're going to ask me how I'll do it, I'll have a video coming up soon. But um, yeah, I stripped it off, um, gave it another shine to kind of buff it, and then I uh, cleaned it up with some Brasso, just some, you know, metal polish, and gave it a wash, blah, 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 and I've let it just go natural patina. So I've been using this pretty hardcore for about a month, um, and it actually looks fucking way fucking better. 
I think, I mean, like, if we just turn it, let me break the RDA off here. If we have a look at the unholy RDA, right, you got that zombie hand and stuff like that, but this is just show you that I run it wide open. If I adjust the airflow <laughs> there, you can see uh, the clear coat and the normal finish underneath there. Uh, and then I go and then you can see it there. And then when I get back to wide open, you can still see the, the original finish in there. Uh, when I get to wide open, yeah, it's just patina all the way around. That zombie hand looks way better with the with the copper in the background and the natural patina around the outside, I think. Um, so yeah, still have the uh, the skull, the double crosses, and the, the old serial number. Uh, we'll look at the RDA in a sec. So here's the mod, 26 millimeters in diameter. I think it's about 125 or something in actual length. Um, and this looks great with this patina on it, I think. The actual rope of the noose and where it says the hanged looks great with that in the background. So I probably won't actually shine this up on the outside. I, I might, but I have no intention of doing it. I think it looks great. Um, I, I have a lot of my older mods that I'm going to do revisit reviews on. Uh, some of them look just look much better with a natural patina on it. And some of the coppers and stuff just look beautiful when they patina. Some don't. And I prefer them shiny and all that stuff. But in this case, I think I'll leave this some bitch as it is. <laughs> so I did do the switch as well, which took off the um, the laser engraving. I took that off. It's still kind of faint in there. I think you can see the 105 and the skull is in there and the upside down crosses. But um, I don't really care that that came off anyway. But um, that was a little coarse in the fingers. The actual X here cut in. It made these, these little Vs around here kind of sharp to the touch it was, it was a little bit uncomfortable so that's another reason i just wet sanded them down to make it nice and smooth now it's super comfortable um at the base of the switch here it does kind of tail off here it kind of grooves in a bit which is it does make it more comfortable uh to fire the button i think if it was just a straight solid kind of shoot down it might be a bit awkward on the finger to actually hit the switch the top is kind of pretty much just like the Rogue or taking cures from, uh, cues from the Rogue. It's just one piece. You put the Addy in there. It's a hybrid, so the battery's got to meet it. Uh, let's have a look at the switch. So to remove it, just like the Rogue mod, just uh, put a little bit of pressure on the button with your thumb. This is how I do it. Um, I don't need to use the coin. I did in the, the video there before I actually oiled up the threads and stuff. But you could just use a tool and spin it out. But rather than mark it up, uh, I prefer just to put my thumb and just spin the mod until it comes out a little bit and then just use your your fingers to to spin it out threads on the inside are pretty okay it's just i still have this kind of junk around the outside here and down there can't really seem to get rid of it but uh it's okay it's not too bad the threading on there is pretty good um i have used three in one oil and everything just to you know to lube it up and get as much dirt out of there and oxid uh, oxidation and all that stuff as i can um here's the switch all right, so you can see this switch is patina too. Fucking beautiful, let's. <laughs> so the switch, yeah, it's a spring, you know. Uh, it's a spring system. Let me show you how it works. So you got your copper contact here, which is surrounded by a, uh, a little cylinder, a Delrin, for the battery to rest on. And then you got some Delrin underneath there in between this spring and in between the spring at the top and the bottom there. So there's basically um, no current or anything is passing through the spring. So no hot button issues with this at all. It's uh, it's uh, isolated away uh, by the, uh, the Delrin here and stuff. So if we just put something in here, I'm just gonna put my tweezers into the two holes, push down, give it a little turn. That's all I need. I'll just spin the rest with my thumb. Okay, and there's your big beefy uh, copper contact there. Okay, threading on it is pretty okay. There's the top section, right, that the uh, the button fits into, and there's the bottom there, Delrin, you can see. Threading on it is pretty nice. It does all come apart. This comes out too for cleaning, for maintenance and stuff. Here's the spring, which is it's, it's pretty hardcore, man. There's, uh, for a clone like this, fucking tension in this, you know, usually springs and clones are just fucking shit. But um, this one's good. I have no complaints. There's nice action on it, you know. And uh, that's the base of the switch, the button. So you got Delrin in there too, and that uh, copper pin screws into this. So, so putting this back together is pretty easy. This cross shape here that just fits into the base of it, and that prevents it spinning around, that it's not going to spin on you. It's kind of, it's locked in there. You get what I mean? It's a perfect kind of fit. So if we put the spring back in, 
and get this down so it sits in there. So it's in there like that, and then we just get our uh, copper contact and just start screwing that in. Keep the pressure on the thread, spin it around. I tend not to use tweezers and stuff like this to get these little kind of um, contacts and stuff down like this, because I find when you slip, you kind of mark them with the tool and it's kind of easy to slip. But uh, should actually got that bag in tight even without the tweezers. All right, it's all about the fucking thumbs, lads. The thumbs and the pressure. So, so this is the unholy RDA, and of course we got the zombie hand and upside down crosses. I've already showed you how the airflow works. Remember what build is on this? What am I rocking? I got a point point one three build. So um, yeah, pretty okay build. Okay, so here's the deck, right? And it, it is it's plate styled. I'm not going to say goon styled because. You know, what's popular just keeps getting re kind of produced and reintroduced to different RDAs and stuff, whether it's a three post or four post or the velocity or the two post then, or, you know, the, the goon style clamp down, clamp at the sides, you know, um, stuff, invisible stuff. So the screws are underneath. I mean, you know, there's innovation happening and all that stuff all the time. Um, so this one is the sideways one. Okay. So basically you, as you can see, you catch your, um, you catch your the legs of your build in these plates here and then you just screw them back in and it's pretty easy there's only like one screw each side uh, the only thing that this is missing from the actual authentic is these outside plates on the authentic have knurling on the inside and the knurling catches the wire so it keeps it kind of in when you press in because a lot of people have problems with the goon me included, is when you put the build in and you start turning down the plates, apart from the fact that they kind of bend if you use heavy gauge wire, they do slip because they're not in there as tight as they can be because they're just held in with plates. You know, there's no screw pushing it down like a traditional deck. So uh, these are okay with the side plates and all that stuff, but it, the, the authentic is knurling on the inside. This one does not. But two nice flathead screws at each side, which I'm happy about. It doesn't have fucking Allen keys in it, which I hate. And here is your positive. And you can tell because you have this, this peak insulator that's running around the bottom there. And this leg will be screwed into connection here. Okay, so I'm going to get some wick. Working in through this, then I'm gonna juice it up, have a little vape on it, and we'll have a little bit of a chat. Okay, so the battery I'm gonna be throwing into this one today is an LG HD2 30 amp. 18650 battery so we bang that in get the button in and work that work it down until it finds the battery and then a stop okay i don't keep grinding it into the positive pin and stuff that's in there it's all right we have vapor okay so let's go back up on top and i'll tell you what i think about this death wish uh the hanged uh mechanical two bot clone Cheers. Okay, so that's an up close and you see how it works and all that stuff. So um, what's the kit like individually and all this stuff? The mod is pretty nice and I really like the build quality of it. Okay, um, it, the, the authentic of this is going for, I think it's about 180 to 200 pounds in the UK. And I think it was a limited run. There's not that many of the authentics out there and stuff, but the clones are pretty, pretty bang on. It, the actual build kind of style of it is very similar to the Rogue, you know the I mean, where you've got the button that screws in and then it's just one piece and you screw the top down. Uh, the button configuration, because it's got the spring, is a bit similar to the original Rogue, not the clone that has magnets. So it's interesting that it uses that. Um, I did have to wet sand all this down because I found the button originally uncomfortable and the threads originally when I got it were pretty kind of rough. There was a bit of three-in-one oil involved in there, putting it on, the threading, working it in, working it out, working it in, working it out, taking a cloth, wiping it all off, and then it makes it smooth. Same with the 510 pin. So the mod itself is okay. Um, it could do even just design-wise with some more vent holes on it and stuff because even though it's 26 mil, it does get a little bit warm. And I'm running a 0.13 build on this and i got a samsung 25r in here but it's still 
run a little bit high. No, I don't have a Samsung 25R. I got a HD. Do I got the LG in there? I do. I got my LG HD2 in here, like I should in the close-up, which is the 30 amp battery. Um, so that's well able to handle it, but it is. It does just get a little warm. But again, it's fine. It doesn't get hot. It's not alarming. I'm not fucking terrified here. It's just it gets a little bit warm. The RDA is okay. The actual build deck and stuff like that is um, it's pretty easy to build on once you know how just to kind of shape your coils and all that stuff. There's not loads of room at the sides there as far as putting Claptons and stuff. You get them in, but it's not loads of room or anything like that, you know, to, to, to kind of fit them in and stuff like that. It, the knurling on the side would have been nice to hold it in. Um, the airflow on this, if I didn't mention it in the close-up, right, basically you've kind of three options, okay? with this upside down cross crack. You have the kind of just one line across. Then if you twist it again, you have one line um, straight down the middle. All right, hopefully you can pick that up. So it's coming in like that. Or if it's wide open, you just have the, you know, the, the vertical and the horizontal, so to speak, just going across the actual cross and that's wide open. But for me the the rda is okay i really like the drip tip i like the deck the airflow is not brilliant it's when it's just a little slit across it's not enough really and it might be okay if you were doing just kind of throat hit high build kind of stuff on it but i mean if you were doing that why would you buy or get your hands on a hybrid mod if you um if you're just going with the, with the actual you know line down in on the airflow you're only getting you're only getting a small kind of bit coming in that's missing the rest of the coil and when you're doing the actual cross you're getting a mix of the both so the airflow on this just for me is a bit wispy you know it's not nice and big and i, I like a nice big airflow a big draw not too big so it's like i don't even know if i inhaled or there's so much air coming in but i like a decent kind of hole like the comp vape caps or like the um, comp life caps as well or the the ccc caps or you know um even you know the the uh, airflow on the majority of kind of what tofo stuff I, j I just really like you know the option of if you're gonna have an option um like small big and yeah whereas in this it's kind of there but the result is not the same you know what i mean so hey guys so i'm just jumping in with a quick re-edit all right so just to uh, just to do a quick summarize on my review, uh, really like the tube. Think the tube is great for the reasons I've already said. RDA is okay. It's not bad. Issues with the airflow, but all in all, it's not too bad. I'm not going to put a, a link of where to directly get this from. I'm going to tell you where I got it from, which was 3fvape.com. And the style of this, or the, there's a few versions of this on that site. It was called the Kind Bright. Uh, crossbones mechanical mod style and the unholy RDA style or something like that I'll put the description in, in, in the bottom here maybe but um, uh, that's what it was called now I've said this before when I did my anarchist clone and the simple mod clone and I think I've said it about a few other re reviews and stuff that I posted on when I put the links in some of these videos to the to the product that I'm talking about okay um, the, the suppliers or the distributors or whatever change that product or change where they get it from or change the factories, etc. And the link I put it doesn't take you directly to the product that I was talking about or showing. And I've had messages and comments uh, most recently on the broadside video I did where I did the authentic and then a couple of weeks later I did the, uh, the broadside clone versus the broadside authentic. I did a comparison video. And then some people got the mod and contacted me and said, look, it's not the same one that you showed in the video. And I checked it out and it's like, yeah, you're right. And that's a prime example of what's happening, different batches, things like that. So I don't want to put any links links in in case anybody clicks on it and gets disappointed when their one shows up and it doesn't look like my one. So all I can do is just tell you the name of it, which was the, um, it doesn't have death wish in the title. It was the um kind bright they were the uh i don't know if they're the manufacturers or that's the factory it's from because there's other versions of this mod on here and it doesn't have kind bright in it the price of it was 29.99 dollars on the 3fape.com site so that's all i can say about it i think i've said enough about it all right so as always thanks a lot for checking out the uh the video i uh, feel absolutely free to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel i'll be back with more videos soon until then take care good luck bye bye